Fox Sports. We are platform. We are Wisconsin. Fun Friday in the Twin Cities tonight. Welcome from downtown Minneapolis and beautiful Target Field. It's a gorgeous night for baseball. The Brew Crew and the Minnesota Twins, the I-94 rivals, match it up. Carlos Gomez, the former twin, he is in the lineup tonight. Played for the Twins for a couple of seasons, scored a huge run for them in the postseason back in the Metrodome. And there is Torrey Hunter. He's back with Minnesota, and he's performing at an all-star level this year. The Twins in first place in the American League Central as we begin play today. Hi, everybody. We welcome you from Target Field. Brian Anderson along with Bill Schroeder. We'll hear from Sophia Minnard in just a moment. Got a great night for baseball here. The Brewers have some transactions to discuss, however, and some roster maneuvers to work out as well. Will Smith was suspended. He appealed that suspension. That has been reduced from eight games to six games. Ryan Braun had a cryotherapy injection rock. These are all things that we weren't <laughs> expecting to talk about before the year. Yeah. He's back but not in the lineup. Yeah, he probably won't be back in there until tomorrow or Sunday, but this was planned by the Brewers. Ryan Braun came to the Brewers in Atlanta and said he was having some problems with that thumb. He got the injection on Wednesday. It was planned because yesterday was a day off. You can use the designated hitter over the weekend here in Minnesota, so you might not have to manipulate the lineup a whole lot as the game goes on. So Braun, he expected back sometime this weekend. Will Smith, that happened a long, long time ago. Go, get thrown out a foreign substance on the hand, but uh, his suspension got reduced by a couple of days. So, again, with the designated hitter, at least here in Minnesota, you might not have to make as many pitching changes. Right. So, Brewers' bullpen a little bit short, still seven guys out there. Rest of the road trip, no Will Smith. The Brewers will play with a 24 man roster, and thank goodness for WebMD, right? Cryotherapy, look it up. All right, great matchup here. These two managers, Craig Council, idolized Paul Molitor. First year managers going at it head to head. Sophia with more right after this.
Wisconsin is brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. By Toyota. See where Toyota takes you. Test drive one at your Toyota dealers. Toyota, let's go places. And by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. It's a border battle featuring a pair of first-year managers. We get a look at Paul Molitor. He has his twins. 11 games over 500. Craig Council trying to get the Brewers back on track as we begin a three-game interleague series here at Target Field. And Craig Council said, if you were a kid growing up in the Milwaukee area in the 80s, you wanted to wear number four because of Paul Molitor or number 19 because of Robin Young. That was certainly the case for Craig Council, the Whitefish Bay native. So let's meet the managers in this series. We all know Paul Molitor, 21 seasons in the big leagues 15 of those with the Brewers the Hall of Famer and now managing his hometown team from St. Paul and Craig Council six years with the Brewers a two-time World Series champion Whitefish Bay native and both managers spoke about the long-standing personal relationship going back to their days in Milwaukee I've known Paul since I was a kid I mean I used to go to his house when I was when I was you know, he was playing, and my dad worked for the Brewers, and our families were actually pretty close. So I spent a lot of time with him, um, and it's, so it's, you know, it's kind of a cool weekend for me just to, uh, to know that he's in the other dugout. But he was around the field whenever he could be as a kid. You know, he, I don't know if he remember, but, you know, Robin Yam, myself, Gantner, the guys that were around all the time, we kind of embraced him. And any time he was around, he was, you know, a, a, welcome, a welcome guest out on the field. to their respective dugouts. It's a border battle. Kyle Loesch for the Brewers against Kyle Gibson of the Twins. We've got first pitch coming up next for you here from Target Field. It's always a lot of fun, no matter the records, and it's been a good year for the Twins so far. They've enjoyed their time at Target Field. They've been a tough team to beat in their home ballpark this year, and they sit atop the American League Central Division standings as we begin play today. Brewers baseball tonight on Fox Sports Wisconsin, presented by Pottawatomie Hotel and Casino. Book your stay now. 73 degrees. Clear skies up above. It is a gorgeous night for baseball here in the Great White North. 
Craig Council and the Brewers dropping two out of three to the St. Louis Cardinals. Coming in with a record of 11-18. He and Paul Molitor managing ball clubs in the big leagues for the first time. Council, of course, taking over after the 25th game of the season. And trying to put the pieces together. Going to have to play a man short for the next six days in the absence of Will Smith. We're ready for baseball tonight. A matchup of Kyle's this evening. Kyle Gibson for the Twins delivers down and away. And away we go from target field. Gene Segura leads off for the Brewers. Ron Culpa calling the balls and strikes tonight. He's also the crew chief. Toby Basner, Brian Knight, Vic Carapaza on the bases. And Segura swings and sends one deep to left. Goodbye. And Brewers fans making themselves heard early here at Target Field. Gene Segura with a leadoff home run. And Milwaukee is on the board quickly. And a Brewer fan caught that ball. Well done, son. Hey, talk about a quick bat on his sinker down in the strike zone. Uh, Kyle Gibson doesn't give up many home runs. Only the, the sixth that he's allowed so far this year. Look at that pitch going down and in on Segura. And Gene able to pull the hands in and knock it out of here. A line drive out of here to left. That's a way to start the series. Powerball home run count for Segura. Number three. And one happy kid right there. Got that. Home run baseball by Segura right out of the gates before many had even made it to their seats here on a Friday night in downtown Minneapolis. Segura that power ball number three been using him as the leadoff hitter in the absence of Ryan Braun. Typically Gomez would lead off but Rock Segura more than capable in that leadoff spot and certainly packs a little punch as well. And so a guy that doesn't strike out a whole lot and when he gets on base you figure he's going to be able to steal if in fact. Now that's what Craig Council wants him to do. Always good to have a left handed batter in the second spot. There he is. <laughs> that's great. Yeah, and a group of Twins fans. It's the young Brewer fan who comes up with a baseball. Way to go, kid. Gerardo Parra back in the two spot for Milwaukee. Chris Davis on the disabled list. So Parra. Getting the lion's share of the playing time right now and a swing and a miss. Looked like that little change up there from Kyle Gibson for the first out. Well, you've met Segura and Para, the rest of the Potawatomi batting order. You got Gomez in the three hole tonight in the absence of Braun. Ryan will be available to pinch hit or play defense tonight. Adam Lind, Jonathan Lucroy, Aramis Ramirez in the middle, Shane Peterson, Jason Rogers, and Hernan Perez will round out the Brewers nine tonight. What is a very short roster tonight. Craig Council hoping that Ryan Braun will be back in the lineup tomorrow. And I think talking to Ryan Rock, he feels like tomorrow is a, a pretty good bet, albeit a day game tomorrow. Yeah, he's a, he looked very good. He was sounding very good in the clubhouse before the game. Had the procedure on Wednesday. And got right to Minneapolis right away. Day off yesterday, all planned out by the Brewers, orchestrated well, and Ryan Braun very encouraged. In the meantime, Gomez occupies the three spot in the batting order. Carlos coming in at 262. He always gets a little extra charge playing here in Minnesota and a couple of years with the Twins. Part of a playoff team, scored a Significant run for them. Running a one game playoff at the old Metrodome. He's got his moment in Twins postseason lore. Yeah, that was uh, an extra inning win for the Twins against the Tigers. How about those numbers? 341 hitter in 11 games at Target Field. And Gibson ties him up. Gomez strikes out. So after the home run. Which he doesn't allow very many back to back strikeouts which he doesn't get very many of either. How about the Menards twins defense rock. Yeah about the middle of the pack off or I should say defensively Rosario Hicks and Hunter in the outfield Tory Hunter a big pickup for these twins. He's a difference maker. Blue Escobar Dozier and Joe Maurer from third to first and Kurt Suzuki behind home plate. 
Kyle Gibson, 6'6", 216 pounds, a first rounder back in 2009 for the Twins in his third season. Had a tremendous month of May going 3-1, and one, a 136 earned run average in six starts, his first June start here today. Coming off the best month of his career, the month of May, facing Adam Lind here with two away. If you're just picking us up, the Brewers are on the board with a Gene Segura home run to start the game. As the fans still file in here at Target Field. Twins are coming off a series in Boston at Fenway Park. They had some rain there, had to play a doubleheader. End up splitting that series two and two. They won the final two games. And they had a thriller yesterday. They were down four nothing in that game against Boston. Scored eight unanswered runs. Had an eighth inning rally scoring four runs and ended up beating the Red Sox and uh, moving themselves back into first place as Lynn swings and misses. Hey, look at the Twins and you look at the stats. I mean, nothing really jumps out at you other than the fact that they just play as a team. That team concept Paul Motter has incorporated. Adam Lynn rolls over one. That'll stay fair and that'll be the inning. So a couple of strikeouts for Gibson, but the Brewers started with a bang tonight. Gene Segura goes deep to left, his third homer of the season. One to nothing crew. Now it's Loesch against the Twins after this. On to left field. We head to the bottom of the first now. Kyle Loesch has a lead to work with. The Hall of Fame member Paul Molitor first year as a major league skipper inducted into the Hall of Fame in 2004 as number four is retired at Miller Park a great Milwaukee Brewer and managing against his old club his Potawatomi batting order looks like this. You got Dozier Hunter and Maurer at the top. Trevor Plouffe, Eduardo Nunez, Eddie Rosario in the middle of the order, and then Kurt Suzuki, Eduardo Escobar. And then Aaron Hicks rounding it out. The DH in play in the American League ballpark. The Brewers have Adam Lind as their designated hitter, and Eduardo Nunez draws that assignment for Minnesota. Lois looking for a bounce back here tonight. It has been a struggle for him. Although he's been okay on the road this year, making his 12th start in an ERA, he'd rather just get off the screen as fast as possible at six and a half. Yeah, he's lost two in a row, both of those coming at home against the Giants and the Diamondbacks, and those two starts, 12 earned runs in eight and two thirds innings. The Twins, in his long career, are the only team that he has not been able to post a win against. And a swing and a miss by Dozier sends the count to two and two. Brian Dozier, what a year he's having again. Primarily hitting leadoff, 10 homers, 26 driven in. He has been a Brewer killer over the years, hitting at a 377 clip against Milwaukee throughout his career. 
outside of Dozier and Torrey Hunter, nobody really stands out as all-star caliber players so far this season. And the Twins about in the middle of the pack statistically and the pitching stats, the hitting stats, defensive stats. But it's like you said, Ruck, this is a true team that Paul Molitor has put together. They all work well together. The pieces fit well together. They have a great closer in Glenn Perkins, and they've been able to move atop the American League Central. Dozier sends one to left field, playable for the Brewers left fielder Shane Peterson and out number one. Well, let's check out the Menards Brewers defense. You got Peterson, Gomez, and Parra from left to right. Aramis Ramirez, Gene Segura, Hernan Perez at second base. Jason Rogers gets it started first with Adam Lynn, the designated hitter today. And for the fourth consecutive game, Lucroy behind home plate. One away for Torrey Hunter now. Big ballpark, pitcher friendly ballpark here in Minneapolis. Good ballpark for Loesch to pitch. He's been bitten by the home run ball a little bit. Giving up 13 home runs. Two his last time out against the Diamondbacks. What a year Torrey Hunter's having, huh? Not only is he giving the Twins the leadership that they knew they'd get, here's a guy, Rock, who's going to turn 40. In a month. Does he look it? I don't think he looks 40 at all. It looks more like 30, doesn't he? The ageless Torrey Hunter. 19 seasons in the big leagues. He and Kyle Loesch were teammates with the Twins. And Hunter in the center field. Gomez going back. And he makes a catch. Carlos Gomez over the shoulder having to deal with the setting sun that is uh, cascading through there. Well, uh, carried a little bit more than he thought. Probably didn't get a real good look at it because of the sun. And if anybody could make up for a bad break on a baseball, it's going to be Carlos Gomez, and he hauls it in just in front of the warning track. And a former Gold Glove center fielder says, "Okay, that's cap tip worthy." Two away. Here's Joe Mauer. What kind of player is Joe Mauer these days, Rock? That is the major question here right. in Minneapolis. Yeah, not much of a home run threat. You know, one home run, 30 RBIs. Only had a couple of years at the tail end of the days for the Minnesota Twins at the Metrodome where he's hitting home runs, but it's going to be around that 300 mark. Full time first baseman now. Uh, concussion problems have taken him away from the catching position. Bauer still has a lot of time remaining on his deal, which was a blockbuster at the time. An eight year contract that will run through 2018. Nearly 180 million on that deal as well. So you don't see much power from him anymore. Bauer hitting in the three spot in the order. Uh, his production has really diminished the last three years. He did have an 85 RBI season in 2012, but you see what's happened to him a steady decline. And I think he and Justin Morneau had a tough time moving into this ballpark at first, knowing that uh, you go from a hitter friendly ballpark in the Metrodome to uh, what they have here at Target Field. And I think the Mauer contract, you know, forced guys like Kadir and Morneau to have to move on because the Brick Twins, small market club, of course, not able to afford a lot of guys to be able to keep. Twins were forced to pay that big contract. They didn't really have much of a choice. Could you imagine a backlash if they let Joe Mauer go? Right. Three time batting champion and uh, won all three of those batting titles as a catcher. Terry Ryan, the uh, general manager. Terry Ryan uh, retired and came out of retirement, and he's turned this thing around a little bit here. Back for a second tour. They had four consecutive losing years, consistently losing 90 plus games, but 
They put the pieces together quickly this year and they've been quite the story the twins and the Astros the two big stories in Major League Baseball so far this season as we hit the month of June there's a call strike three Mauer watches it go by and Loesch off to a good start three up and three down against his old mates. Presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. The Brewers with a one to nothing lead thanks to Gene Segura's solo home run as we head to the second inning. And Ryan Braun back with the Brewers, not in the starting lineup tonight, but is available to pinch hit after leaving the team in St. Louis to undergo a cryotherapy procedure in Los Angeles. And uh, both Craig Council and Ryan Braun saying that procedure went about as well as expected. And they're hopeful that with the three to four month effectiveness and timeline of the treatment he will hopefully not need one for the remainder of the season and uh, Ron optimistic said you know it, it's been effective before hopefully it'll help him get through the rest of the season here and uh, possible that he'll return to the starting lineup tomorrow. All right Sophia thanks and uh, Rock they, they certainly need him and uh, not only is he the the premier bat in this lineup you're hoping this doesn't pop up again. Braun was very confident that he wouldn't need anymore as Lucroy sends one deep left center. This one's got a chance on his way back. And goodbye, Jonathan Lucroy Homers. Yeah, he's getting hot. Man, get off to a very slow start, but Lucroy, pretty good series in St. Louis, particularly last game of that series, and takes that one deep. Second home run. Seventh allowed by Gibson this year. A guy that doesn't give up many. He's a sinker slider guy. And Luke Roy puts a charge into that one in the deepest part of this ballpark. Yeah, he hits him where the grown men hit him out there in the bullpens. That was a big blast. Here's Ramirez. First ball swing that's bobbled out there by Escobar. And Ramirez will leg it out. Swing it away at the first pitch. Yeah, B6. Take it back to the Lucroy Homer. There's a change up. Change up or slide or something that is off speed. The Lucroy able to wait back on and hit it over that 411 side into that Brewers bullpen. There you go. Two solo home runs for Milwaukee to start this series. A man on. Here's Shane Peterson. But Rock getting back to uh, Ryan Braun, he seemed very upbeat, very confident about the procedure. I had never heard of cryotherapy prior to uh, right. last offseason for Ryan Braun, and cryo, you know, means freeze, and that's exactly what they do. They freeze the nerve in there so he doesn't feel the pain. Yeah, it doesn't do anything to help or, or heal the, the problem for Braun. He just can't feel it. 
no danger that it's going to really do much else. I talked to Braun about some side effects. He said they don't know of any. Not too concerned about it. As Sophia was saying, it lasts about three months. But they need him in the lineup. I mean, he was uh, swinging the bat so well in the month of May. If he continues to do that, the Brewers are going to be able to put up some runs. In the meantime, Shane Peterson finds his way into the starting lineup. Peterson putting up big numbers down in triple A. He's been a, an overachiever a guy who has endured a lot of years in the minor leagues. Finally getting a chance at the major league level again. It's his first trip to the big leagues since 2013 had a couple of games with the Oakland Athletics. Traded from the Cardinals to the A's that was part of the Matt Holiday deal. So Peterson. Going to try to take advantage of the playing time that he will get. One for four on Wednesday in St. Louis. Got to hit his last time up. Now Peterson down on strikes. So we're seeing a couple of things here that we don't normally see in a Kyle Gibson start. Strikeouts and home runs. Right. His third K to go along with the two solo homers. Yeah, strikes out a batter about every other inning. 62 innings, 30 strikeouts coming in tonight. And a changeup off the plate, and Peterson waves at it. The changeup is a big pitch for this uh, Minnesota Twins pitching staff. That has been uh, something that they have all tried to incorporate, and it has helped Gibson tremendously. Hey Amen. Good for him. That's. Such a big pitch, such an important pitch for anyone to know how to throw and learn how to throw. Their pitching coach is Neil Allen, minor league pitching coach in the Tampa Bay Rays system, and getting a chance as a major league pitching coach for the first time. And he is a big proponent of the change up, and he's got them all believing. And when you're a sinker slider guy, and that's all you really have, you don't really don't have anything to keep lefties on. Lefty's on it. There he is. Really trying to get all of his starters to use that changeup, and it's been a good pitch. That changeup, such a good pitch to left handed hitters when you really don't have anything other than that is an off speed pitch. Not much of a curveball, so you incorporate the change. Jason Rogers in a 1 1 count. And it really can't be a tough pitch to learn, just a grip. Rogers a swing and a miss. Well, you feel good for a number of these uh, these folks with the Twins. Brewers don't have to uh, see them outside of these interleague series, but for Paul Molitor, legendary Brewer, to get his first managerial experience, and then you have Neil Allen, who paid his dues in the minor leagues, and these guys are having a lot of success this year. Good for them. Brewers like to play well. The, you know, the Brewers have lost seven of nine. Seven of the last nine games have gone to the Twins, although they were two and two last year. The Twins have played them tough. The border battle, as the marketing folks have dubbed it. Just about a five hour drive between the two ballparks. It's a beautiful drive. I made that drive this morning. Right? <laughs> I was going to say. Very nice. Up close and personal. It's very pleasant. It's so green. Everything's so green on the way here. And there's a nice little about an hour window where there's no cell service. So it's just perfect. You're right? just on your own. You just hide. Ah, it's nice. Minneapolis and St. Paul. The Twin Cities. They did a great job with this ballpark. Rogers fouls it back. Got day games the rest of the series. Tomorrow and Sunday will be afternoon affairs. We're on the air at 1230 both days. Got another former twin going tomorrow for the Brewers, Matt Garza. Aramis Ramirez at first. Rogers grounds to short. Escobar to Dozier and to Mauer in time. Double play to win the inning. It 
goes 6 4 3, a slow developing double play. But the Brewers strike again. Back to back hittings with leadoff homers. This time it's Lucroy, his first of the season. 2 to nothing, Brew Crew. A target field, including a number of members of the Brewers' front office. So the sales and marketing team here enjoying this one. And we're glad you're with us on a Friday night. Beautiful night for the grand old game tonight. Kyle Loesch with a couple of homers to support his effort tonight. Segura and Lucroy. And Loesch coming off a three up, three down first. Facing Trevor Plouffe here to start the second inning. It'll be Plouffe, Eduardo Nunez, the DH, and then Eddie Rosario. Yeah, Plouffe, another guy having a pretty good season. I don't expect him to hit 300, but he provides power. He's been pretty good at third base. Torrey Hunter, Brian Dozier. And they say the maturity of Trevor Plouffe has certainly helped things here in Minnesota. Loesch burning off the edge. Two and two the count. Bluff has big power, hits in that cleanup spot for a reason. That one's in the air to right. Pretty well hit. Long run, Para. And the gold glover is there to make the play for out number one. Yeah, a lot of fly ball outs for Kyle Lowe, I guess that's not what you want to see. He's normally a ground ball pitcher when he's got it working for him, but if you're going to give up fly balls, this isn't a bad park. As, long as you keep him away from the lines. And pretty fair down the lines. 339 to left. And they got that high wall in right. Takes a pretty good shot, particularly from a right-handed batter to get over that fence. You mentioned Loesch has a, a bit of a a milestone here tonight at stake. Kyle Loesch has recorded at least one win against. 29 of the 30 current Major League franchises. The Twins, the only team that he does not have a win against, and uh, he'd like to yeah. accomplish that. I don't know if players are so concerned about it or think about that, but it's interesting that only 12 pitchers in the history of the game have beaten all 30 teams throughout the Major League. So that's yeah, that's something, something to hang your hat on, and you know. Los has only faced the Twins one other time, so it's not like the Twins have been beating them up. There's a swing and a miss. Down goes Nunez and a strikeout for Loesch, his second. Loesch was a much different pitcher while he was a Minnesota Twin. And uh, he even admits that he was not the best listener either. He and Ron Gardenhire didn't exactly see eye to eye. Loesch was a Four seam fastball, 
top of the strike zone strikeout pitcher. And that, that didn't exactly play well in the Metrodome either. It wasn't until he got to St. Louis that he transformed his game under the tutelage of Dave Duncan. It's not until you get older you start listening to people, right? <laughs> and uh, fortunate for Loesch that he is still pitching and still able to use some of that knowledge. Yeah, the only other time he's faced the Twins was back in 2013. Took a loss here at Target Field. Little tapper. Rosario is out. Loesch makes it look easy in the second inning. He has started by retiring the first six batters he's faced. It's 2 nothing, Brew Crew. something unique and special about my relationship with that organization at least to me you know um, at 58 years old you know over a quarter of my life was spent playing for that franchise so um, yeah I, I man the memories are fantastic twins manager Paul Molitor legendary brewer player and the correct council was Waxing poetic today about every kid growing up in Wisconsin. You wanted two numbers, either four or 19. And the igniter wore number four. You know, he says he doesn't really like the nickname igniter. No one ever calls him igniter except for none of his friends. I mean, nobody in the clubhouse. He's not real into that nickname, which uh, I would love a nickname like that. Well, it fit for sure. I mean, <laughs> one of the great things about the fact that I played in the major leagues and with the Brewers was the fact that I was able to play for a lot of years with Molitor and Young. I mean, those two guys, unbelievable the way they could just energize a ball club both on and off the field. And I don't know how many times I sat in that dugout and watched Molitor hit a double, Young hit a single, Brewers up one zip. Hernan Perez leads off for the Brewers, grounds out to start the inning. Well, Molitor played 15 years. With the Milwaukee Brewers before he uh, ended up in Toronto. And, uh, you know, he, he had made three All Star teams before the 91 season when he was 34 years of age with the Brewers. That year, he led the, led the league in at bats and runs scored and hits. At 216 hits that year, led the league in triples. So he's doing all of that at the age of 34. And then at the age of 35 and 92 was his last season with Milwaukee ends up going to the Blue Jays part of the World Series run there make four consecutive all star teams from his age 34 season through his age 37 season he ended up playing till he was 41 as a matter of fact he came back to Minnesota for the final three years of his career Segura grounds to second base two ground ball outs. Or Kyle Gibson in this third inning. Paul Molitor 
led the league in hitting as a 39 year old for the Twins in 1996. First game was in 78. Here's a question in our carsoup.com trivia. Who surrendered Molitor's first career hit? Against the Orioles. Okay. Good question. We assume it was in that same game. St. Paul native. Grew up in the uh, the same sand lots that produced Dave Winfield. He's kind of the last generation of player you can say grew up in the sand lots. Right. And Mao is a heck of a bridge player. Oh, is that right? Oh yeah. Before the games, that was big with the Brewers back in those days. You, you, you know. Wasn't like back, you know, these days where you see the guys sitting around in the clubhouse watching Dumb and Dumber. <laughs> Is that what they do? <laughs> Just I didn't, I didn't know they replayed our broadcast before the games. <laughs> movies like that, you know, they're sitting around watching movies. Those big bridge games back in the, you know, they had the A game, the B game, the C game, and certainly Molitor was in the A game. He and Simba used to get into it from time to time. Nice. Arado Parra with two away. Here's a two-one. And he slaps one through a base hit. Para to the opposite field. A two out single for Milwaukee. First hit for Para. I guess the point of it is, is not only you know, the, the guys on those teams back in the you know, late 70s, early 80s, not only were they competitive on the field, but they were competitive off the field as well. Tested their minds all the time as Para slaps one by Plouffe in the left. Why do you figure it took so long for Molitor to manage in the major leagues? I know it was something he wanted to do right after his playing career ended, but he was 41 when his playing career ended. Right. I'm not sure Paul he really knew what he wanted to do. He was there was a point in time where he was, uh, you know, in the broadcast booth with the Twins from time to time, and kind of uh, you know seeing what really fit him, what he wanted to do specifically. He didn't go down to the minor leagues and coach full time. He was an assistant. I should say a, a guy that would, would go into the minor leagues and work with guys on the infield and you know, work on base running and things like that. But a wealth of baseball knowledge. I mean, if you are a player these days and don't listen to Paul Molitor, you don't deserve to be in the big leagues. Gomez, a base hit through the hole. Carlos Gomez follows Gerardo Parra. And the Brewers with two on, with two away, back to back singles here. That's going to give Adam Lynn the swing against Gibson. Well, when Gibson leaves his pitches up in the strike zone, the Brewers, and that's considered up in the zone. Anything above the knees as it gets the home plate. That big two seam fastball for a guy that's six six. He doesn't throw all that hard. 91, 92, change up at about 84. Here's Adam Lind, the designated hitter for the Brewers tonight. Comfortable in that role, all his years in Toronto. It's hard to imagine it now when you look at this ballpark and uh, the success that the Twins have had, but there was a time when Paul Molitor was probably next in line to manage the team after Tom Kelly. It was ultimately it went to Ron Gardenhire, but Molitor was the next guy. But remember, there were discussions of contraction with the Minnesota Twins. There was a lot of talk that the Twins would be one of two teams eliminated from Major League Baseball. And I think at that point, Molitor realizing the timing wasn't quite right, pulled his name out of the hat. The uh, job ended up going to Garden Hire. That ball's way back. Look out, Adam Lind with a towering home run, and the Brewers are. Swinging the big bats tonight. Three run home run for Adam Lind. Five to nothing, Milwaukee. Yeah, that was up in the zone fought by Gibson and Lind able to tomahawk it out of here. Adam Lind, normally a low ball hitter, but it looked like something off speed up around the belt. Talk about a blast. That's one of the longest we've seen here. Don't get to this ballpark all that often. There it is, up around. Up between the letters and the belt, there's a changeup, and he knocks it way back and right. Two outs, nobody on, two singles, and a home run. Brewers with a five to nothing lead. And here is Luke Croy who takes strike one. Adam Lind with his ninth home run. He has already exceeded his total from last year. He hit just six last season. 
had a 35 homer season with the Blue Jays in 09. He can put the big power numbers up if he's healthy. And for the most part this year, he's been healthy. And again, a guy used to being the designated hitter. I mean, this is nothing new to him. Big smile for Adam Lind. Well, the Brewers have done something to Kyle Gibson it hasn't happened in nine straight starts. They have given up not three or fewer runs in nine consecutive starts. First time all year he has allowed multiple homers in a game. Luke Croy to right, a base hit just over the glove of Joe Maurer. And the chance of Luke coming down here at Target Field. So four consecutive hits with two outs. Luke Croy keeps it going. He's two for two. And check out the approach by Luke Croy. Pitch up. And Gibson's having a difficult time getting his pitches down. I mean, the pitch to Lind, that pitch, that was a two seam, but that was a fastball, and Luke Roy able to shoot it into right field. Just tell those pitches up around the belt. The sinker ball just flattened out. They don't have a whole lot of downward movement, not much depth. And those are the ones that become very hittable. If you average it out over nine innings, Kyle Gibson's home run rate. Per nine is 0 0.7. So fewer than a homer per nine innings pitched. He's given up three here tonight in the first three innings. Brewers have scored in every inning. Two away for Ramos Ramirez as he takes strike one. Ramos had a tough series in St. Louis. Just feels like his bat's a tick slow right now. Caught in between, it looks like, right? Out ahead of the off speed stuff, behind the fastball. That's sometimes what happens. Try and get that bat started, and that's when you swing a pitches out of the strike zone. And he's been doing a lot of that. Ramirez has been. Very aggressive. He's always been an aggressive hitter early in the count, but even more so here when he's been in a slump. It's right off the end of the bat. That's a good example of what you're talking about. He's a little behind the fastball and a little ahead of the changeup. He's in our T Mobile game changer. We put Paul Molder on that list of third basemen in Brewers franchise history. Ramos Ramirez in his fourth year with Milwaukee, fourth all time. Some good names on that list. Be nice to see Rami get to 11 home runs this year, or at least 11 more. A swing and a miss. Gibson strikes it out. Well, a whole lot of damage with two outs. The Brewers get four hits, singles by Para and Gomez, and then Adam Lynn goes downtown in Minneapolis. Three-run homer, and the Brewers.
431 feet. And the sweet left handed swing of Adam Lind is in our worth another look, courtesy of Columbia St. Mary's. Look at the top hand. Just watch the top hand and how dominant it is on a pitch up in the strike zone. He's really trying to make good solid contact and the way that top hand just rolls over. And that's how we're able to get good wood and good power on a pitch up in the zone. You know, the, the, the bottom hand really controls the bat as it gets to the strike zone. And you don't need a lot of top hand on pitches down. But when there's a pitch up in the strike zone, that top hand takes over. And Adam Lynn shows you it's a good example of it right there. Very small population of the uh, of the world can hit a ball like that that right. far. Yep. 431 feet. That phantom cam is a great look at all that goes into. And it was perfect contact. On the bat as well. No vibration at all through that bat. Just the way that uh, that top hand taken over rolls over after the point of contact. And that's how you get that good bat backspin on the baseball. And that's why you know, Adam Lynn was able to hit it as far as he did. You know, weak top hand, and that ball just a flare in the left field. Kurt Suzuki, the Twins catcher, right off the leg of Loesch. He steps and fires to first. And everybody on their way out to check on the starting pitcher. He says, I'm good. A calf save and a beauty by Kyle Loesch. Well, no way Kyle's coming out with a five to nothing lead. He's been uh, looking for a good start and some run support all season long and off to a good start. Kick save and a beauty. Seven in a row retired by Loesch. Has his first save of the year. <laughs> There's a strike to Eduardo Escobar getting the start sh short here tonight. Danny Santana has been ill. Their everyday shortstop. Escobar, a utility man, a guy that can play all over the infield. They can spot him in the outfield if need be. Getting the call at the premier position tonight, the sixth position on the field, the shortstop. Yeah, that and the fact that Santana has really not been swinging the bat all that well. There's a base hit to right. So that is the first hit of the night for the Twins. And it snaps a run of seven in a row for Kyle Loesch to start the game. In the final year of his deal with the Brewers, he signed a three year contract after a fantastic 2012 season with the Cardinals, where he won a career high 16 games. He's been a very good pitcher for the Brewers until this season. Things have not gone well for him. Swing and a miss by Aaron Hicks. He was out in front of a changeup. And that's what he needs to do more of keep that pitch down in the zone. Everything down when he's going well, getting ground ball outs. Twins like to push the envelope a little bit with the running game. Be curious to see how Molitor plays it here down 5 nothing, but they are an aggressive base running team. Man, it all depends on the guys that are on the bases to steal. I mean, if you got a guy that runs well, Escobar, one for. Two so far this year in stolen bases. One man out. We play in the home third. Hicks takes one down and away. Those are right behind home plate almost. That's a pretty good look for an on deck hitter, is it not? Yes, it is. When when is it too close? Uh, he's uh, pushing it. So if you're catching right now and you notice him in that position, is is that worth saying something? Or well, you can say something. They, they make a move over closer to the on deck circle. But again, your your team's going to be affected throughout the game as well. So what advantage does a hitter have by standing there? Not much. No. No. 
How many guys actually stand on the on deck circle anyway? Yeah, well, it doesn't seem like a safe surface. The position of the on deck <laughs> circle here is pretty close to be right behind home plate. I mean, it's only, I'd guess, 45, 50 feet. It's much closer than the mound from the dugout positions to home plate. Certainly from the front row. There's a call on strike three. Loesch hits the corner. And Aaron Hicks got caught guessing, and down he goes. It's the third strikeout for Kyle Loesch. Now Dozer knows he better swing at a pitch on that corner. You saw it pretty well. <laughs> hey, next week, Carlos Gomez leads the crew against Bryce Harper in the Nationals. That's June 11th through the 14th. And all fans at Miller Park on Sunday will get a bobblehead of the Brewers center fielder in his 2014 All-Star jersey, courtesy of Pepsi. Is at Brewers.com to reserve your spot today. That's next Sunday. Next Sunday. Brewers have work to do this Sunday here in Minneapolis. Six games remaining on this road trip. Pittsburgh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday night. Bryce Harper and the Nationals. Bryce Harper is starting to move into the face of Major League Baseball territory right now. I, I think Mike Trout, maybe Buster Posey carry that honor at this point, but the year that Bryce Harper is having and at age 22, <laughs> you could see him uh, taking over as the face of the game. For so many years, it was Derek Jeter. Jeter retiring after last season. That's the thing most people don't Remember is the fact that he's only 22 years old. Yeah. Off to a great start in yeah. his career. Dozier fouls this one back. Well, you're going to get the same at Miller Park. Bryce Harper, the rest of the Nationals, Jordan Zimmerman, Wisconsin native. Brewers will have a homestand with the Nationals and the Royals coming up. A couple of contending teams. That's backhanded. Segura throw to second. Oh, what a scoop by Perez for the out. Heck of a play by Hernan Perez. And Segura makes a beautiful play to get it to him. The inning is over. Kyle Loesch with three shutout innings. Hotel and Casino. It is five to nothing. Sun setting here downtown Minneapolis and Target Field. Say the Milwaukee Bucks inaugural summer block party tips off tomorrow at noon at the Stockhouse grounds of Schlitz Park. Fox Sports Wisconsin will be there with giveaways and prizes. The block party is free and open to the public. Just visit FoxSportsWisconsin.com. Click on the summer block party banner for details. 
Shane Peterson leads off for the Brew Crew here in the fourth inning. Brewers have scored in each of the first three innings. And all runs coming on home run balls. Yeah, taking advantage of some bad pitches by Gibson. That doesn't leave too many pitches up in the zone. That's normally when you get to a sinker baller early in the game. Of course, he hasn't had too many bad games this year. Coming off a fantastic month of May. He's been one of their top pitchers. There's a change up again, and Peterson is down on strikes. So while he's given up the three home runs, he's racked up five strikeouts now. He's gotten Peterson twice. And one away in the fourth. And he only had 30 strikeouts in his first 10 starts. So somewhat unusual on both ends, as you mentioned, the strikeout totals and the three home runs. Jason Rogers takes a strike. Gibson is an Indiana native. Played his college ball at Mizzou. Gets ahead of Rogers. That was a breaking ball in there for strike two. 0 oh and 2 the count. Rogers bounced into a 6 4 3 double play his last time up. They were to lay off that change up that time. 6 6, 216 pounds. Tall, lanky right hander. Got off to a great start last year. He made the club as the fifth starter last season. And won each of his first three starts. He's pushed his way into a much more prominent role in that rotation this year. 2 2. And the sinker is fouled off. You're right, though, Rock. Those sinking fastballs are. They're moving a lot, but they're up yeah. a lot. And they don't have they don't move down a lot when they're up like that. It's kind of a, has a tail, not a sink. Suzuki wants another one here. And Rogers pulls it. Fair ball. Gloved by Plouffe. Long throw in time. Mauer took that throw in front of the base runner. Or at least let the ball pass in front of the base runner. Yeah. Him a little bit more time for that ball to come down to him as opposed to jumping on top of the bag. A lot of times the first baseman will do that as opposed to risk having a base runner step on his foot. 5 3 put out, two up, two down. Here is Verdad Perez. Just made a beautiful play last inning. Segura made a great play to backhand it as Perez sends one deep into left center. That is going to be run down. Rosario to make the play. Three up. Three down for Kyle Gibson. Five to nothing, Milwaukee. The Twins are coming up. Loesch back to the mound.
Johnson is presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. The crew with a 5 to nothing lead here in the fourth inning. And Kyle Loesch had given up 12 runs over his last two starts. Pitching coach Rick Kranitz saying before the game he was just making too many mistakes. So he said the keys for Loesch today against such a heavy right-handed lineup were to keep the ball down, commanding the outer third of the plate. But he said more importantly, getting back to pitching inside. He said Loesch needed to get back to protecting away from the from the plate and also being able to pitch inside when ahead of the count or late in the count. He said Loesch was almost pitching defensively. Wants him to get back into attack mode. Be more aggressive in the strike zone. Not worried about the corner so much. If you get the ball down in the zone you don't have to really be on the corner so much. You get the ground ball out. It's no big deal. Not sure how you get away from that because that's what the way Kyle Loesch has been pitching for the last number of years. Very aggressive working ahead in the count. And relying on that sinking fastball to get ground balls. Now Los says he's healthy. It's no uh, it's no injury situation. It's more of a mechanical flaw than anything else. Uh, not able to, according to Los, get the proper load so the ball is not feeling the same way out of his hand. And uh, even though his velocity has not been any different, but his command is. Not where he wants it to be. The release point. If you want to get real yeah. technical with it, is just not there. And yeah. to the naked eye, you know, we don't see that. But Loesch says he can feel it, and it's not where he needs it to be. It doesn't feel like it's out front. It doesn't have the crispness. It's all about, you know, even just the angle of the hand as the ball comes out of his hand. Tory Hunter pops this one up into shallow right. Para is there. Yeah, the grip on a baseball just doesn't have the crispness. Of his pitches not finishing like they were last year. Awfully difficult to describe, but uh, it makes a big difference the way the ball finishes in the strike zone. Curveballs, sliders, you know, not as sharp, kind of rolling out of the hand, and that's what you're talking about. That there's little fine mechanical flaws. Sometimes they're very difficult to correct. Here's Joe Mauer with one out. And I would imagine, you know, I don't, I'm not in the head of Kyle Loesch, but I would imagine there's there's a lot of pressure on a pitcher like Loesch. He's 36 years of age. He was named the opening day starter this year. He's in the final year of his contract. And there's a lot of pressure on him. And as you age and how your nerves handle such things. It changes. I would say it doesn't even go that far. I think he puts a lot of pressure on himself, as does Garza, to be the leaders of this rotation. And I mean, imagine there's a little bit of that final year of the contract thing, but I feel as though he need they need to step up and be an example to the rest of these starters. It hasn't been a good start for either one of their seasons. Garza is on the mound tomorrow, coming off that five shutout inning relief appearance. Mauer sends one foul. Now Loesch has been much better on the road this year for whatever reason. Had his best game of the year in New York as Mauer lines one to right, a base hit. Now one to pull and Mauer reaches just the second hit of the day for the Twins. Both of them are singles. And just got it out of the reach of Jason Rogers. Got it down on the trademark. Didn't get very good wood on it, but put it in a good spot. And that fastball and Mauer able to get it enough of it to get it out of the reach of Rogers. Pitch was in, but muscles it into right field. Brewers have had three home runs here today. Segura led off the game with a long ball. Then Lucroy in the second, leading off that inning. And Adam Lind had a two out, three run home run in the third. A man on with one away for Trevor Plouffe. Flew out to right field his last time up. Lucroy gets down and blocks it. I don't have to worry too much about Joe Mauer stealing. He's uh, got about a three foot lead. <laughs> so the aggressive twins doesn't apply to everybody. Doesn't apply to the former catcher. 
Well, you can understand and relate. That may be four. Yes, I can. Plouf rolls one towards short. Segura rounds it, fires it for it out there. And that's all they'll get. The Brewers do well to get the lead out. Two away. Hey, today's Tavern of the Game winner is the Pioneer Keg in Teresa, Wisconsin. If they call the Brewers in the next 24 hours, they get 40 Miller Lite beer pen tickets to a Brewers home game. And this offer courtesy of the Tavern League of Wisconsin and Miller Lite. It's an appropriate Tavern of the Game. It's our uh, stage director's name, Teresa. What so if that was an inside job? No. Yeah. I don't think I drove through Teresa today. I tried to log all the little towns that I drove through, but Teresa's up kind of 41. Uh -huh. It's not on my way. On the way to Fond du Lac. You didn't stop by Teresa. Uh, the Pioneer Keg then? No. No, I saw, I saw a lot of saw a lot of horses and cows. It's a beautiful drive. It is very nice. And the roads are, uh, you know, they improved a lot of the roads on that. 94, uh, 94. west. Yep. Pass by the Dells, or at least the exit to the Dells. It's fun. So if you're sitting there right now thinking about, you know, we should go to Minneapolis and go watch the Brewers play, I'd say go ahead and do it. Day games. Next two days. Ground ball to Segura. Bobbles gets it back. <laughs> Steps on the bag for the out. Retiring. Eduardo Nunez, calm and cool. Gene Segura, Kyle Loesch continues to put up zeros. To see a Jimmy Johns right out of the gates. Gene Segura leads off with a bang. First leadoff home run of the year for him. His third home run of the season. And the Brewers had one on the board quickly, and it's been a theme of the night. The Brewers have hit three homers. All five runs have come in on the home run ball. The big blow, and Adam Lind three run shot with two outs in the third. Segura leads off. We're in the fifth inning. Segura, so three homers, 15 RBIs. Ground ball, fair at third. Ploof with a quick release gets the out. He knew he had to hurry. That nice play. Well, how quickly he got rid of that baseball. He had to, you're right, because Segura gets down that line in good shape. Playing in with the bag, thinking that Segura might try to bunt and gets him by a step. Well done. Trevor Ploof. Don't call him the magic dragon. Here's Gerardo Parra. Had a single his last time up. Little opposite field base hit. He pulls this one. Rolls over it. Mowers there. And two quick outs for Gibson.
Had a noteworthy occurrence in the big leagues tonight, Rock. Okay. Remember uh, the guy we saw in spring training, Pat Venditti? Right. The, uh, the switch pitcher. Ambidextrous. Yes. So he got called up to the big leagues and became the first player to record it out as a left handed pitcher and a right handed pitcher in the same inning since your guy, Greg Harris, did it back in 1995 with uh, Colorado. Greg Harris of uh, Rob Deere fame on Easter Sunday back in 87. Right. Now the Rob Deere homer to left and then ultimately the Dale Swaim homer. That's a foul ball. Just missed the line. Gomez very close to extra bases. What a thing to be able to do. Imagine that. Man. We saw him in spring training. It was really, really fun to, to watch him maneuver and the talent that it takes just to make it to the big leagues. A switch pitcher. He's got a special made glove. It's got a pocket on both sides. Right. It's got yeah. a that's a thumb hole on both sides. All right. No it's pinky side. Gomez strikes out. One, two, three inning for Gibson. He's got it locked down now. Many of the border connections here with these two franchises. Kyle Loesch, the former twin, he's off to a great start tonight. Four shutout innings. His offense has given him five runs. First man up for Minnesota is Eddie Rosario, and he swings and fouls one out of play. Loesch was originally drafted by the Chicago Cubs and then uh, ended up with the Minnesota Twins made it to the big leagues with the Twins in 2001. There's a good change up. Loesch was involved in a pretty significant trade for the Twins as it turned out. So Loesch was a prospect at the time with the Cubs. He was traded to the Twins for Rick Aguilera and Scott Downs. A line drive base hit to right center. Yeah, same pitch but a different location. Left that one up in the zone and. Rosario able to hammer that one into the gap. First change up was down. Look at that, where that last one was up out over the plate and much more hittable. The lefty Rosario hammers it out there into right field. For the Twins, it is their third hit. They have all been singles. First time they've had a leadoff batter reach. Here is Kurt Suzuki. And a firm bunt foul by Suzuki. 
Third base coach is Gene Glenn. Making fans down there with the home crowd. Hollander's put together a good staff. He's got Tom Brunanski as his hitting coach. Bench coach is Joe Vavra, who uh, spent some time as a third base coach. These guys have been around the organization for a long time. And in talking to Paul Mauder before the game, relies heavily on his coaching staff, uh, still learning how to manage, still trying to figure it out. Surrounding himself with some good baseball people. Probably the biggest challenge of Molly's life, I would imagine. I mean, baseball, although he worked very hard to, to hone his craft, I mean, baseball came relatively easy to him and natural. I would imagine this has been a big challenge for him. But they're off to a great start. Mm -hmm. Craig Council has been very interesting to listen to uh, as you go into a new city and he gets a lot of the how is it to be a manager for the first time questions and he's very thoughtful with his answers and he says like today he was talking about managing and said you know there are so many things that I thought I knew about managing that now that I'm managing I didn't realize. <laughs> And it makes me want to go back and say a few things. That hits the foot of Los. It's going to trickle into the grass in right field. And Suzuki will reach on a hit. The second time he's gone back up the middle. So back to back hits, and the Twins putting up their biggest threat of the night. And another one off of Los. He's taken two. And Rosario hit him the first time, and Suzuki a pitch. And it looked like uh, Los was going to be able to get the glove on. Not sure where it went. It hit him in the foot or in the leg, I should say. And everybody's safe. When you're a sinker ball pitcher, ordinarily you're a very good defender. You've filled your position well, but a couple of times Los has not been able to get the glove down. Two on, nobody out. He's at the bottom of the Twins order. Eighth place hitter Eduardo Escobar at the plate. Got Hicks on deck. Starts another strike. A breaking ball in there for Los. Eduardo Escobar. Happy to see his name in the lineup tonight. Yeah, Santana not only having a difficult time at the plate, hitting around 220, he's got 12 errors. At shortstop, so Escobar gets the shot tonight over at short. Twins only have a three man bench. How about that? Of course, you can get away with it in an American League game a little bit easier than you can in a National League game. A stacked bullpen. And a great closer at the end of that pen. Lots of options. The Brewers are going to see one of those relievers. Twins are carrying a pitcher who uh, they acquired out of the Rule 5 draft from Atlanta. So he has to stay in the big leagues all year. Hasn't pitched much. He's kind of the last man out there, but he's going to get the start tomorrow. J.R. Graham will match up against Matt Garza. I would imagine that bullpen is pretty uh, well. Spent right now with the double header in the game yesterday. But that hammer at the end of the bullpen is as good as it gets for the Twins. Yeah. 20 saves this year. Len Perkins. He's pitched in back to back games. Finished the game yesterday in Boston. It was not a save situation, but 20 saves already. Down and in. Escobar 
has worked it into a full count. This is a key hitter for Lois in this inning. Brewers have a 5 nothing lead. Twins put the first two on with singles. The nine hole hitter. Aaron Hicks is next. Lois is looking for a ground ball here and he gets a pop up. Ramirez in foul territory. And there is out number one. Well, he needed that one. Took a little off and got him underneath. Well, now a ground ball can get him out of the inning. Twins don't hit into too many double plays except for Joe Mauer. Mauer is grounded into 10. That leads the American League, by the way. Aaron Hicks, he's a tough guy to double up. He runs well. And he rolls one here. It's bobbled by Perez, and they're only going to get one out. Trying to be a little too quick. It would have been tough to turn two anyway on Hicks, but at least Perez would have gotten the, the out in second. Yeah, I'm not sure they would have been able to turn two, but you're right. You get that lead runner. But once he bobbled it, you know, he's able to keep his head and get a shore out at first. So it's second and third back to the top of the order in Brian Dozier. One of their best hitters. Dozier. Takes a little breaking ball down and away. Participated in the home run derby last year. How about that? He's got big pop. He is a doubles machine. He's tied for the American League lead in doubles. Has 17. Gets on a lot. He scores a lot of runs out of that leadoff spot. He's second in the league at runs as well. As a second baseman, he ranks. Among the elite in a league that has Robinson Cano's off to a slow start. Leads him in homers, runs, doubles, slugging percentage, and runs batted in. Last year, Dozier hit 23 homers. A career high for him. Drove in 71. Also a career high. A product of their minor league system. Drafted in 09. Big spot for Loesch. Got a 5 nothing lead. Twins have him at second and third with two away. One ball, two strikes. Yeah. Two and two now. When Dozier first came up, he played exclusively shortstop back in 2012, and they moved him to second base. He's flourished in that role. Little topper, tough play. Ramirez, bare hands, throws, not in time. A run scores on an infield hit. And not much Ramirez could do about that one. A good pitch by Loesch, but those are able to put it in play and drives in the first run. A guy with big power that can hit home runs, you can do this too. Gets on top of a pitch. You see Ramirez playing behind the bag, not able to get enough on the throw to get him at first. Five to one, Brewers. RBI for Dozier, number 27. And Ramirez makes that play as well as anybody, but uh, not hit and hard enough to be able to get the out. Beats it by a full step. Now it's first and third for Torrey Hunter. Um, 
I think Torrey Hunter is trying to play long enough to have a chance to play with his sons. He's trying to pull a Ken Griffey. <laughs> <laughs> College age kids. Got a son at Notre Dame. There's a shot. Base hit. Another one is in. Torrey Hunter with an RBI. It is five to two now. And the fourth hit of the inning. Two infield hits. All four hits are singles. Well, it's starting to get the ball up in the strike zone. I mean, Kyle Lose right now is doing what Gibson was doing early in the game, leaving pitches up. Yeah, two seam fastball, and Torrey Hunter able to wait on it long enough and finds a hole in the left field. So Rick Cran, it's a quick chat with Kyle Loesch. Torrey Hunter is tied for seventh in the American League in RBIs. He's just five RBIs shy of the league leader, Mark Teixeira of the Yankees. What a year he's having. He loves it in Minnesota, doesn't he? First and second from Mauer. Strike. Snuck a fastball in there on the bottom edge on Mauer, and it's 0 and 1. And they got Peterson out on the left playing him like a left right handed pull hitter. Mauer uses left field very effectively. Gomez swung around toward left. You can see where Parr is playing. Unusual to play there with a left handed hitter up. Back on the outside corner, Los puts it in the same spot. 0 oh, and 2 the count on Mauer. Those are two perfectly placed pitches. The Hall of Fame corner down there. Yep, right on top of the other. Quickly 0 oh, and 2. Rose trying to get through this fifth inning. Two runs are in. RBIs from Dozier and Hunter. Here's an 0-2 upstairs, and Mauer sends one out. Just like that, this game is all tied up. Now the home run ball once again gets Kyle Loesch. Well, a couple of men on and two outs and three consecutive hits, including the three-run homer on an 0-2 pitch. You just can't let that happen on an 0-2 pitch. Two pitches right on the outside corner. Tries to come inside for some reason. Not sure why. Not to that of here. All tied. You could see Losh's reaction right away. He knew it. After making two perfect pitches. A huge mistake. Plute bounces one. Nice play by Ramirez. Long throw is in time. The inning is over, but the Twins score five runs. Three run homer by Joe Mauer. We're all tied at five here in Minnesota.
Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Marshfield Clinic. Don't just live, shine. By Piggly Wiggly, the official supermarket of Fox Sports Wisconsin. And by Hupie and Abraham, 800-800-5678. Hupie and Abraham, tell them you mean business. Well, the Twins with a quick strike with two outs in the fifth inning. Loesch had two men on with two away, and all of a sudden, five runs are in. Had that infield hit by Dozier. Torrey Hunter drove in a run, and then Joe Maurer on an 0-2 pitch with a three-run home run. 5-5. Five, five. Only Maurer smiles second home run of the year. He doesn't hit him anymore, but knocked that one out. Seemed like he was looking inside, wasn't he? It's the only way you can get to a pitch like that. Got to sneak one by him. Brewers have Lind leading off. He hit a three run home run with two outs in the third inning. Brewers jumped out for a quick five on three homers. A slow roller over there is Maurer. He'll shovel it to Gibson. Now Gibson has settled in now. He's coming off a six pitch inning in the fifth inning. He's retired eight straight. Lucroy had the last hit for Milwaukee. That was a clean single to right in the third. And still another big inning on this Brewers pitching staff. They've been too too many this year. Five, six, seven run innings. They gave up a ten run inning in New York. At the plate presented by Wendy's for Lucroy. And that really is a killer when you're up by five. First game of the series, everything's looking good, and all of a sudden, bang, 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 and you're all tied up. And the Twins out hitting the Brewers now after their five hit inning. Well, it's kind of the way the Twins have been going this year. They've been a They've been a team, a resilient ball club. They're coming off a 19 win month of May. They have more wins in the month of May than the Brewers have to date. Brewers are coming into play today are just 18 and 36. The most wins in franchise history for the Twins since the 91 Minnesota team. A World Series team. Beat the Braves. I saw one of the uh, the heroes from the uh, 91 season, Ken Herbeck, up here oh, yeah. earlier. Very nice. There's a lot of uh, former Twins hanging around. Lucroy on the ground. Shortstop Escobar will make the play, and Lucroy. He's retired. Nine in a row retired by Gibson. Hey, the Brewers postgame concert series continues on Saturday, June 13th, as the Brewers take on the Nationals. And OAR performs a free postgame concert presented by Pick and Save. That features all their biggest hits. For more information and tickets, go to Brewers.com slash concerts. You'll be there for that? Oh, yeah. Big OAR fan, are you? I will be on the 13th. Uh, hits like this town, hey girl, and more. Oh, you just rattle them off. Uh, that's the first three entries on your iPod. Just read it. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot tell a lie. I think it's going to become a tradition with you hosting the uh, the ballpark concerts. <gasps> Strike two, Ramirez. He put a nice little spread on for the Joe Nichols concert. Did a lot of cooking that day. Yeah. Had to lug it in, keep it warm. Oh, is that right? You did. <laughs> didn't you just say you cannot tell a lie? Yeah, I did, didn't I? I want to thank Beth with uh, <laughs> catering. You got people for that. <laughs> Rock's got people for everything. Beth, was, Beth, Beth is the best, no, by the way. Yeah, it was a good time. Yeah, takes care of us in the uh, in the booth every eight day with a nice warm meal. Beth and her team did a fantastic job at the Sea Leg experience as well. Yep. Way to go, Beth. All headed up by our buddy Tom Olson. Don't forget about him. Yes. All that food that we get's gonna all dry up. <laughs> we love you, Tom. <laughs> a 
Full count to Ramirez. Aramis trying to get something going with two outs. Shane Peterson is due next. Brewers led five to nothing. Twins just put five on the board with two away in the bottom of the fifth. Joe Maurer with a three run homer. Payoff pitch to Aramis. And down he goes. Changeup got him. Ten straight retired by Kyle Gibson. Still tied at five. Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. We are tied up at five here in the sixth inning at Target Field. Beyond the Diamond is a series of community outreach events that will take place each month during the season, all of which involve partnering with Brewers Community Foundation, players, coaches, Brewers wives, alumni, and team personnel working in the community. The community events will be funded in part by Brewers Community Foundation and focused on the areas of health, education, recreation, and basic needs. All right, Sophia, thanks. Here is Eduardo Nunez. He'll start it for Minnesota. Brand new ball game now. We're tied at five. Nunez down the right field line foul. And then Rock, let's see if Kyle Loesch can get it together again and uh, get on a run like Kyle Gibson at this point, who's retired 10 in a row. Yeah, find that release point again and get the baseball down. It's been a story of just the opposites for these starting pitchers. A swing and a miss. Down goes Nunez. Right down the middle of the plate, Nunez comes up empty. Yeah, pulled off of it. You know, Kyle was very good in the beginning of the ball game, keeping the baseball down, keeping them off balance, and had a difficult time with two outs in that fifth inning. And Gibson just the opposite. He had troubles early, but it certainly settled down. And that's not exactly where Loesch wanted it, but he got away with it. That'll bring up Eddie Rosario, and he's swinging away at the first pitch. A little off speed change of pace from Loesch. Brewers have activity in the bullpen in case Loesch runs into trouble here in the sixth. Michael Blazik getting loose. All even at five. Pitch number 96 for Loesch is a fastball up and away. There's Blazik yeah, under the watchful eye of Lee Tunnel. A yeah, guy that can need up maybe a couple of innings for a great council tonight. One of the best that the Brewers have done in that bullpen so far this year. Michael Blazik. In the air to left, Peterson will slide under it for out number two. Two up, two down for Loesch. Here comes Kurt Suzuki, who reached on an infield hit in the fifth inning. A lot of games going on tonight. Everybody's in action tonight, all 30 teams. 
on a Friday night across Major League Baseball. Got some West Coast games this evening. Anthony Rizzo has hit a couple of home runs tonight for the Cubs. He's got 11 now. Cubs are playing the Nationals in D.C. at 7 4 Washington, but Rizzo has hit two out. Jordan Zimmerman on the mound for Washington tonight. Two and nothing on Suzuki. There's a strike. Cubs hanging right in there in the central, aren't they? And right now in third place behind the Pirates and the Cardinals. Cardinals with the best record in the big leagues coming into play tonight. There's a shot up the middle, a base hit. Suzuki singles his second hit. And he's two out of three, and another two out success for Minnesota. There's something about Kyle Lowe's, Kurt Suzuki, hits him pretty well. He's now six for 14 against Loesch. Two for three today. You see that fifth inning, that was a trouble inning for Loesch. Gave up the five hit, five runs. And that three run homer by Maurer, second career homer for Maurer against Kyle Loesch. Maurer only has three hits against Loesch. He's three for four, but he has two homers. Into center field, Gomez is there for the out, and that will retire the side. So Loesch comes back, puts up a zero. We're all knotted at five. We're headed to the seventh inning in Minneapolis. are coming up. Shane Peterson ready to lead things off for Milwaukee. Our Carson.com trivia today. Paul Molitor's first career game played in uh, 1978 versus Baltimore. Who surrendered Molitor's first career hit? That would be Mike Flanagan. Mm -hmm. And it was an RBI single. So it wasn't just a hit. It was a run producing hit and it kind of set the tone for the rest of his career. A 306 career hitter, Paul Molitor. The starting lineup that day, check out who was pitching Rock. Augie. Augie's on the mound. Yeah. Great names there, huh? Roma Thomas, Cecil Cooper. One of my favorite people in the world, Larry Heisel, who still works with the ball club. Yeah, that looks like a uh, fantasy camp coaching staff right there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> a lot of those guys have been at uh, fantasy camp, yeah. It's impressive how you weave the fantasy camp plugs into our trivia. There's yeah. a swing and a miss. Brewers.com, by the way. <laughs> Slash fantasy camp. That's an eight strikeout <laughs> for Kyle Gibson, who looked like he was headed for an early exit tonight, but it has been anything but. And most of his uh, strikeouts have come on that changeup. You see the, uh, the changeup grip. 
the old uh, Don Sutton circle change going down and away from a left handed hitter and. Gene Peterson is having a difficult time with that pitch tonight. A lot of punch outs. For Gibson. He had an eight strikeout game against the White Sox. As Rogers breaks his bat and that one's foul. Now Gibson allowed the third fewest homers in the American League last year. For pitchers who uh, pitched as often as he did, the cutoff was 175 innings. He's given up three tonight, but all of those were early in the first three innings. Slider is swung on, little roller, backhanded to throw the first in time. You can just see where all the pitches are that he's throwing now. I mean. Down in the strike zone, down and away, down and in. And has been very effective with all of them. Hey, Summerfest is just a few short weeks away. And with the Rock the Ballpark ticket package, you can get a ticket and a Summerfest general admission ticket, all for just 22 bucks. For details, visit Brewers.com slash Summerfest. A Brewers ticket and a Summerfest ticket, general admission, 22 bucks. Good deal. Say hey to our buddy John Bowler. He's getting all the pieces put in place for Summerfest. He does a great job. And they do a great job. It's always one of the highlights of the year, Summerfest. Got some big uh, big performers set to sing. Carrie Underwood's coming. Keith Urban, the Rolling Stones. You should go to the Keith Urban concert. I know you've been uh, checking out his infomercials. Did you order the guitar? I did. I did not. <laughs> That's what I get for telling you, right? <laughs> you should. Yeah, I'd love to see that. I've been thinking I should learn how to play an instrument. I, mean, you know, I took up the trumpet when I was a kid. Oh, really? Tuba or trumpet? Because I had you more as a tuba no, a trumpet. Guy. And oh, the okay. reason I picked the trumpet, you know, my, my our parents, my brother and I, made us. You no, know, take at least two years of an instrument. Okay. We went to a, a music store and I picked the trumpet. You know why? Why is that? It only had three keys. <laughs> I figured, how tough can that be? <laughs> three up, three down inning. Kyle Gibson's locked and loaded. He's got more than three keys going right now. Nine Ks, a career high. Inning from Target Field in Minneapolis. A reminder that tomorrow our coverage of the 2015 Women's World Cup begins as China takes on host country Canada. And then Monday, don't miss Team USA's first game as they battle Australia. That's on Fox Sports 1, plus games all weekend long on Fox, Fox Sports 1, and Fox Sports 2. And all of it is streaming live on Fox Sports Go. 
Now Los looks like he is done for the day. And yeah, looks upset. He could kick himself right now. Had a five to nothing lead and evaporated quickly in the fifth inning. As Jeremy Jeffers takes over for the 29th time this year. Good numbers for Jeremy. A 351 earned run average, more strikeouts in innings pitched, and has allowed only the three home runs. Jeffers has emerged into the eighth inning pitcher for the Brewers, but I think with the part of the lineup that's coming up as Hicks drops down a butt. Jeffers throws to first, throws badly. Wow, that gets by everybody. And Hicks is on his way to second. That'll be a bunt single and an error. Throwing error by Jeffers, and Minnesota has the go ahead run at second base. That was a beautiful bunt there. Yep, good bunt, and had Jeffers headed to over again, maybe just hold on to it. And great counsel. Uh, can't figure out sometimes what's going on. And that's a beautiful bunt. Jeffers taking a little bit too long to unwind and get it off to first base, and not even close. And even with Perez trying to back up, can't keep Hicks at first. Single in an error. First error for the Brewers. That's the ninth hit for Minnesota. Top of the order now, and Brian Dozier. Jeffress, I, I figure he's in now because of the part of the order that is coming up here in the seventh inning. Right, top of the order, yep. Yeah, nine, one, two, and three do up. Yeah, Jeffress last pitched on Monday against the Cardinals. Shattered his bat. Ramirez will look the runner back, and Dozier is retired. That's a big out for Jeffers. Ate him alive inside with that power sinker. And Hicks has to stay put at second base. That's a difficult pitch to try and hit to the right side. That power sinking fastball boring in on the hands of that right-handed batter. Here's Torrey Hunter now. He had a key hit in the five-run fifth. And a two-out single to left. Drove in the second run. And then Maurer hit the three-run homer right after him. And for Kyle Lowe, that's the at-back that he wishes he could have back. You're okay giving up the two runs. It was still 5-2 to two at the time. But he got Maurer 0-2 oh, on two bottom corner pitches. And then Maurer... Took a high fastball and hit it into the seats. Yeah, tried to come in on him. Very dangerous to come in inside. There's a lot of room for error when you come in like that. Tried to do it. Left it out over the plate just enough for Mauer to knock it out of here. Only takes one bad pitch. Runner at second. Hunter is one for three tonight. Another one jam shot. Perez will make the play for out number two. This time Hicks does advance. Yeah, However, yeah. it's the second out, and here comes Mauer. And see how Craig Council wants to play it here. You got first base open. With a right-hander coming up. Plouf for three. Now a tough guy to strike out. Puts the ball in play. Well, a few years ago, maybe five years ago, this is uh, this would be a no-brainer, and for Craig Council, he is going to still is. He is not going to allow Joe Mauer to, to beat him here. No. Well, he got the right-hander on deck. Jeffers is much tougher against right-handed batters. He's able to use that sharp. Slider that he has to complement his big fastball. Intentional walk for Mauer. And maybe the reason he is being put on his last at bat in an 0 2 count, tied it up. His second hit of the day, and only his second home run of the year. I hate to see that one. 
count with two outs. So it's first and third now. Trevor Plouffe in a tie game. And Jeffers, no one get away from him. Twins are three for seven with runners in scoring position. Got the infield hit by Dozier, then that single. By Hunter. That's a ground ball. Ramirez has it. Nice easy hop for him. And that will retire the side. So Jeffress works around a bit of a jam. Runners at the corners. Nobody scores. Still tied at five. Marshfield Clinic. It started with a Gene Segura home run in the first. Lucroy then homered to start the second inning. His first home run of the year. And then Adam Lynn had a big one. Three run shot with two outs in the third. It was all roses at that point for the Brewers. They had a five to nothing lead. And Loesch was pitching well. He went through the first four innings scoreless. But the Twins scored five runs in the fifth, all with two outs. Uh, this game is all tied up. Brian Braun is here and active. Coming uh, off that cryotherapy injection. And the Brewers could use him if need be. Probably will be in the lineup tomorrow. Segura leads off. Twins have gone to their bullpen. And Blaine Boyer, he last pitched in the Second game of the doubleheader at Boston. Good numbers for Boyer. 27th appearance and a 2.03 earned run average. Not a lot of strikeouts, but not a lot of walks either. So it's not a team you want to trail late. There are no teams you want to trail late, but especially the Twins with their closer Perkins. It's pretty much lights out. The way he's pitching this yeah, year. Left hander, he throws hard and he has not blown a save this year. Brewers trying to put one on the board and get into their winning bullpen. Jeffress just gets out of a jam, stranding two. We're in the eighth inning in downtown Minneapolis. All tied at five. So we're a wave and a miss. Boyer with a strikeout. The Brewers have punched out ten times today. Boy with a slider to get him. Average fastball slider to go with it. Basically just a two pitch pitcher. You can get away with that when you're in there for just one inning. You see Suzuki setting up on the outside corner and just a little bit off. That's a good pitch ahead in the count. 
Well, Kyle Gibson retired the final 13 batters in a row that he faced. Had nine strikeouts tonight, a career high for him. Para takes a strike. Gibson surrendering the five earned runs, but ends up going seven innings. Brewers have not had a man reach base since the third inning, the Lucroy single. 14 in a row retired. Half swing, did he go? He did not. He checked it. Loesch goes six innings, gives up eight hits and five earned runs. No walks, four strikeouts. And neither starter will factor in the decision tonight. This is a bullpen game. So in 92 miles an hour, very similar stuff to the starter, Kyle Gibson. I mean, sinker, slider. So not much of a contrast between the two, as opposed to the Jeremy Jeffers, Kyle Lowe's contrast. Third gear and fifth gear. Para back to the box. Boyer for the second out. Two gone for Carlos Gomez. Gomez had a single to left field in the third inning. He was on when Adam Lind went deep. Two outs, 5 5 game. And that ball's hit high and deep right center. Gomez will send that one high off the wall into second base with a booming double off the scoreboard in right center. Man, that's what makes this such a good pitcher's ballpark. That's a home run in just about every other ballpark with that high wall out there. Gaps aren't all that deep, but especially in right, we get that high fence, that high wall. And that one held the Carlos Gomez driving to right. I think Gogo thought he hit it out. Didn't start running until he got past first base. And you wonder if he was running all the way. He might have been able to get into third base. Uh, midway up on that high wall in right center. Well, that is going to force the hand of Paul Molitor. The twin skipper will make a change. So Boyer gets two outs, gives up a double. And Molitor is going to play matchup here with Adam Lind coming up. Hoping to make a little noise here in this eighth inning. They have a man on with two outs. Carlos Gomez just doubled. And it's going to be Aaron Thompson, the left-hander, 
out of the Minnesota bullpen to face Adam Lynn. Yeah, one and one record for Thompson. He picked up his win yesterday in that victory in Boston. He pitched a scoreless in and gave up a hit. And he's been very good when he's been coming into the game retiring first hitters. Four for 24 are our first batters faced for Aaron Thompson. Go ahead and run at second base and Lynn swinging away at the first pitch. Trying to ambush the big lefty. Adam Lind with his power ball home run number nine. That three run blast in the third inning. Second to Ryan Braun. Braun's in the top ten of the league in homers. That would be Bryce Harper setting the pace right now in the National League. Those are the numbers for Lind against left handed pitchers. He's hitting 208. 200 batting average, a bit of a surprise with the way he's able to stay in there and drive the ball to left. If he's going to do any damage against Thompson, it's going to probably be to left field. Another slider. One and two the count. Two outs in the inning. In a 5-5 game, Lynn takes one down and in. Carlos just doubled off the right center field wall. A high wall out there. Kept it in play. He hit it 400 feet. But a two bagger to show for it. And Lind in the right field hits sharply. Oh, it's over the head of Torrey Hunter. Gomez will score and Lind in the second base. Wow, hung a slider and he's able to pull it. There you go. The Brewers take the lead. Torrey Hunter. Was frozen on that line drive. Didn't know exactly which way to go. And by the time he recovered, it was over his head. Hey, you don't see that very often. Now with Torrey Hunter, he's a very good outfielder. And check it out. That's a mistake. And Lind able to go out and get it. He hooks it. Hits it on a line. And Torrey Hunter taking a terrible route to that baseball. Coming in and over. Didn't have to do either. There's a big two out hit two outs nobody on and the Brewers with back to back doubles. All right major misplay by Torrey Hunter a former gold glove center fielder. And the door is open here the Brewers score they take the lead Molitor makes another change here in this eighth inning. We'll take a break. In this game, he got a little help from the Twins' right fielder. 
But he hit it like a bullet. And it's an RBI double to give the Brewers a 6-5 lead. Next up, Casey Fiend for Minnesota. And Fiend was on a disabled. He's missed 25 games with a right shoulder strain. Came back at the end of May. 13th, or I should say 14th appearance for him. And two outs. Jonathan Lucroy up and be a be nice to get another two out hit. Lucroy takes a ball high. Fiend is Minnesota's setup man. He's their eighth inning pitcher when they have a lead. But Molitor's calling on him here to try to snuff out this two out rally. Gomez doubled. Adam Lynn doubled. And now Lucroy up, who has two hits tonight. Hit his first homer of the year in the second. And a single his next time up. First homer of the year comes after Lucroy missed 38 games with a broken toe on his left foot. Just got back in the line of Monday. Pops this one up in the infield. Who wants it? Nobody's there. And this ball falls. And Lynn's coming home. And he scores. Wow. How about that? Oh, boy. boy. Seven to five, Milwaukee. Good job, Adam Lynn. He never slowed. He saw what was developing and just kept on trucking. That's good hustle. That is outstanding hustle by Adam Lynn. And 99 times out of 100, I mean, the guy just kind of coasts around the bases. I'm not sure why Jonathan Lucro is still at first. He should be at second base. That ball hits right in front of the plate. Not sure why Suzuki's not going after it. Pitcher's in the way. Suzuki can't get it. Ends up in foul ground and Lind able to score. What a great break for the Brewers. Doesn't start running quite yet. Sees that ball drop and now able to score. Good instincts by Luke by Lynn. Seven to five. That'll go as a base hit for Lucroy. You know, you, you see it all the time, and it's just a baseball thing. Pitchers are told to clear out, let the position players field the pop-ups. But the best option for the Twins right there was their pitcher. Well, if not him, then, then the catcher. Catcher's got to be able to handle that. Joe Mauer's not going to be able to get there. He's had too far to go, at least didn't look like it. That's got to be Suzuki's ball right there. He was looking for somebody else to take it. Think about how the Brewers have taken the lead in this inning. On a misstep by Hunter and Wright, and miscommunication by the Twins on that pop up in the infield. That is a sweet way to get a hit in an RBI right there. No kidding. Lucroy <laughs> has three hits tonight. Ramirez rolls over one. The shortstop Escobar goes the easy way. And the inning is over. But the Brewers take advantage of some sloppy D by the Minnesota Twins. Two runs are in. It's seven to five crew.
Sports Wisconsin is brought to you by Miller Lite, the original light pilsner. Cheers, it's Miller time. And by the Wisconsin Lottery, reminding you to please play responsibly. Brewers now have the lead. It is 7-5 Milwaukee on a couple of gift runs by the Twins and a little two-out rally by Milwaukee. A note, this copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Brewers, may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent of Tim Shea and the Milwaukee Brewers. Jeremy Jeffress back on the mound, and Rock uh, Craig Council is going to try yeah. to squeeze another inning out of Jeffress, who was able to get out of a first and third situation in the seventh. I certainly got the stuff to be able to get out of a mess. I mean, he's got you know big strikeout power and got some weak ground balls to get out of that inning. I'd be curious to hear from Craig Council. Normally, the late inning relievers for the Brewers are one inning pitchers. And you start to wonder if Jonathan Broxton. Maybe not healthy, or maybe he just feels like Jeffress is the better option yeah, in this situation. I think uh, it's a ladder, actually. Jeffress has been far and away the much more effective of the two. And you have a lead, stick with him. Paul Molitor trying to push some buttons last inning. And the Brewers able to score twice, even though the Twins had a few misplays. Nunez with a base hit. Lead single for Minnesota to start the eighth. That was a very sharply hit ball. And a tying run will come to the plate. Hey, the annual border battle between the Brewers and Twins shifts to Miller Park June 26th to the 28th. And on Sunday, the 28th, all fans at Miller Park, we get a bobblehead of Brewers Hall of Famer and current Twins manager Paul Molitor, courtesy of Clements. Visit Brewers.com for tickets. Is that a first in Major League history that a, a that manager manages against a team who is having a bobblehead night? I think so. That was hard for you to say. Wasn't yeah, I it? couldn't quite figure out. You know, it's so rare I couldn't quite find the words. Maybe the first bobblehead that uh, is shown head first sliding. <laughs> Yeah, three of the last four innings, the Twins have been able to get their leadoff hitter on. Eddie Rosario at the plate. Stands right on top of it. <laughs> Jeffress right now in the win column if the Brewers can finish this one off. Game was tied when he came in. No victory for Loesch. Still has not beaten Minnesota in his career. He's beaten every other team except the Twins. Just his second start. 0 oh, 2 the count and a swing and a foul. Rosario is a touch late. 97 down in his own. Right down the middle, though. There are the changes. Sardinius. Takes over at second. That bumps Perez to third. Ramirez, when the Brewers have a late lead, is typically out. Council tightens up his D a little bit. Got three shortstops in there. In Segura, Sardinius, and Perez, all sh natural shortstops. Another 0 2 from Jeffress, and he steps off. Does not have a stolen base to this point. He's been caught twice. Just missed. Luke Roy made it look good, but it was outside. Watch how Luke Roy catches this. Not close. Yeah, tough pitch to take, but not much you can do with it anyway. So it's one and two. Got him. Runner takes off and no throw. 
LaCroix blocked it as strikeout, but a runner does advance on a wild pitch and doubled up on a curveball. Just missed the outside corner with the first one and then dropped the second one in the dirt. It's where you want it with two strikes. Good block by Luke, but good base running by Nunez to get into scoring position. As soon as Nunez saw that pitch in the dirt, he took off. Yeah. Indicative of his manager. So he is at second with one away for Kurt Suzuki, who has two hits, both off Los, two out of three tonight. Fastball is humming in there on that inside corner to the right handed hitters. Yeah, Suzuki handles Lowe's pretty well because he doesn't have the big velocity. We'll see how Suzuki handles this. Breaking ball strike. Buckled him. Can't set him up any better than Jeffers has. Let's see if he can make that third pitch here and get him. Imagine a hitter after two pitches like that. You've got the uh, the mental Rolodex going here. Yeah, well, you're in uh, <laughs> protect mode right now. You just take a guess at one. He's trying to put it in play. 0 oh and 2. Fastball outside missed 98 miles an hour. It's the best bolt of the night for Jeremy Jeffers. In his second inning of work. Doesn't seem to bother him too much. To the fastball and down goes Suzuki. That one had some serious yak on it. Big movement. The two seamer got on top of it, 97 miles an hour. And I tell you, this is an impossible pitch to hit. I mean, the only thing you can do is lay off it. Look at the way this ball drops. That's almost like a split-fingered fastball. Goodness. It's at 97. Yeah. That is a rare bird right there. Not many throwing that pitch in the big leagues. Runner at second, two outs now. Back to back K's. Here is Escobar. Eduardo Escobar has a single tonight. He's pulled one off Los, a single to right. One for three. The other two outs are in the air. That's a balk. Jeffers box and Nunez will be awarded third base. Home plate umpire Ron Copa spotted it right away. And he kind of flinch. You know, with the hands, the legs, anything. And you're sitting out there on that rubber. Let's see what he does. Uh, Jeffers. Just a little bit of a turn of the shoulder and he stopped. And as Lucroy was going through the signs, Lucroy flashed down a late sign. I'm not sure if Jefferson shook off or not. Here we go. Two outs and a runner at third now, and it's two and oh. Brewers took the lead with two in the eighth. Escobar has been a good hitter here in his home ballpark. Hitting at a nearly 340 clip in 32 starts at Target Field. On the ground. Nice and easy. Sardinius. Jeremy Jeffress gives Craig Council six big outs. Two scoreless on the board for Jeffress. He's in. The winning circle right now. Brewers lead it.
Tubers rewind. Joe Maurer hit a three-run homer in the fifth inning. A five-run inning for Minnesota. They tied it. But then the Brewers get a double by Adam Lind after Gomez had doubled. And then Luke Croy. They say it looks like a line drive in the books. I'm not even sure this one's going to look like a line drive. But it goes as a hit and an RBI. But Jonathan Luke Croy, the Brewers score twice. Take advantage of a couple of men, uh, twins defensive miscues. Yeah. That's where we sit as we head to the ninth. You ever have a hit like that, Rock? Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's what most of my hits look like. <laughs> there you go. Brian Dunsing taking over. Yeah. He, uh, didn't take long. Peterson able to bang one into left field. He's glad that uh, Gibson's out of the game. Yes. After three strikeouts, Peterson wasn't going to hang around long. First ball swinging. Give you those numbers again. Uh, Brian Dunsing. And he's having a rough time of it. A 736 earned run average. And only 11 innings of work in 20 games. Dunsing last pitched a couple of days ago. I should say yesterday, a third of an inning. Did not allow a base runner to reach. Only five strikeouts in 11 innings. Jason Rogers. With a man at first. He is 0 for 3 tonight. Rogers got the start at first base tonight. Lind and there's the DH. I think Lind is pretty comfortable in that DH role, huh? Did that a lot last year, right? Two hits, four RBIs. Toronto. Some guys can't stand it. Some guys thrive in it. The manager of the Twins was a pretty good DH. At the end of his career, extended his career. His 39 game hitting streak came as a designated hitter. Had an injury starting that year, right? Hamstring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Blew out a hamstring when he hit a home run. He hit a home run, blew out a hamstring going to first. Is that right? Yeah. That so doesn't happen very often. No, no home run trot, you're saying. Limp. He was into a full sprint. Yeah. Josh Hamilton blew out a hamstring on a walk off double the other night yeah. with the Rangers. Yeah, Molly spent a lot of the first half on the DL, came back right after the All Star game. And he had his 39 game hitting streak. I slightly tweaked my hamstring pushing the gas pedal today on the way to Minneapolis. So it happens. <laughs> Rogers a whistles one past Escobar, a base hit. A little heavy footed today. <laughs> We averaging about eight. <laughs> a little weak hammied. It's more weak hammied than heavy footed. Yeah, okay. <laughs> All right, so back to back singles. And on Perez will bat. He's going to get some playing time. He's going to get a shot here with the Brewers. He didn't get much of that with Detroit. That's a tough lineup to break into. Tigers are pretty well. Set across their infield. There's a good bunt. And well done. Dunsing will make the play. Sacrifice bunt. And the runners at second and third now. Craig Council looking to extend the lead. And Perez able to drop down the bunt. Doing the little things. Those are the little things that players like Perez need to be able to do. Those are the things that Craig Council was able to do. That's why he played so long. Top of the order, Segura. He's one out of four tonight and a solo homer to left in the first inning. He hit a bullet out of here to start the game. Three home runs tonight for Milwaukee. Segura. I was going to say this might be a good uh, opportunity for the Twins to walk Segura to bring up Para. Lefty on lefty. And that's what they're going to do. Set up the double play. You get a left handed batter up there. Mahler does have a right hander in the bullpen. If you're thinking ahead. One more hitter. There's only one out.
And Segura draws the intentional walk. So the bases are loaded now, and here comes Gerardo Parra trying to put this one away. Parra won't waste time if he sees one he likes. Trying to get on this left hander quickly. He's got a hit tonight. He's one for four. Starts him with a breaking ball. Pretty good against lefties, 300. That is a significant improvement for what he's done in his career. And a lot like Adam Lind, he hasn't had a whole lot of chances against lefties the last few years. Like Lind, he's been in a platoon in his days with the Diamondbacks. The more you see, the better you feel. Here's the 1 1. Whoa, look out. Did that hit him? I think it did. It did hit him. So Para is hit by a pitch. With the bases loaded and a run's coming in. That'll be an RBI the hard way. And this is a reviewable play, and I think Paul Mauter is going to get out on the top step to let his video crew take a look at it. You could definitely hear it. The thud before the pop of the catcher's mitt. There's definitely a double hit there. The yeah, question is, did it hit the bat or the hand? Yeah, sometimes it's very difficult to see on a replay. It just barely grazes him. Looks like it grazed just the forearm. Take a listen. That yeah, was a double hit. You're right. It hit the forearm. Baseball changes directions ever so slightly, and I think Molitor's satisfied with the call. He's going to go get Dunsing. So the pitching change is coming here. All right, the Brewers have an 8-5 lead. Three crazy ways to score runs to have the lead, and Molitor goes back to his pen. We'll take a timeout. Brewers now lead 8-5 in the ninth. By a pitch with the bases loaded. And this will give you a great look on Phantom Cam. Maybe the only camera that can give you the perfect visual. And right. Wow. I mean, if it hit him, yeah, just barely grazed him. Yeah, like right in here. It might have got a piece of him, but not sure. Right on the <laughs> wrist. Watch his batting glove. See if it flips. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> That's tough. Doesn't too, matter now. Too close. But he, he did a good job selling it. And in the score, Shane Peterson, a Badger Mutual Insurance run of the game. 
So here is Gomez now with the bases loaded, eight to five Brewers, just one out. The first year in the American League for Stauffer has spent the first nine years with the Padres. Recently reinstated from the disabled list himself. Gomez on the first pitch pops it foul and out of play. Tim Stauffer. Just, just trying to get back in the flow again. Seven walks, three strikeouts. So he's got a walk to strikeout ratio a little over two to one. Yeah. <laughs> Usually the other way around, right? Gomez got it going in the eighth. Had that double off the wall with two outs and nobody on. Everything changed at that point. He's got a chance to drive in a bunch here. Two hits tonight for Gomez. You get the feeling the way Molitor has managed this one. There are a lot of guys in his bullpen that he needs to get some work. Or at least try to get out of slumps. Right, right. He is going to the pen excessively here in the late innings. Well, that, and he doesn't want to use one guy too too much. You know, not too much, not too many pitches. So he's able to go to him tomorrow. You have a double header followed by a late afternoon game, and then you come back to Minnesota, have another game. This guy's got to be dragging a little bit. Good day to catch him. Meanwhile, the Brewers had the day off here in Minneapolis yesterday. The last day off for 17 straight. There's a swing and a miss. Gomez strikes out. The pitch that just wouldn't get to the plate. Gomez way out in front of it, the second out of the inning. There's a changeup. That is a pitch that gives the Brewers fits. Of course, it gives every team hit fits. When you have a big swinging, aggressive swinging ball club, that changeup is that is an equalizer. Kevin Gibson, the twin starter, featured a good changeup, and despite giving up five runs, he struck out a career best nine today. Adam Lynn dumps one into left center. Rogers is in. Segura right behind him. He'll score. Throw it into second and gets away. And Para takes a big aggressive turn. Man, oh man, the Twins is throwing it around, boy. How about Adam Lynn's night at the ballpark? Six RBIs. Ends up at second base, and the Brewers have busted it wide open. And on the first pitch, not over swinging. And it's another changeup. You can see the grip. And look at Lynn, the way he stays on that baseball, keeps it in the hitting zone a good long time. Doesn't hit it all that well, but making contact and two more runs. And the Brewers now have a five run lead again. It's going to be an error to allow the base runners to advance. Here is Lucroy, takes a strike. I think Lynn's going to be uh, in the uh, D8 spot tomorrow. I think I think he has to. And where, he wherever he had lunch today, <laughs> I think he'll be in that restaurant as well. Whatever you did today, do it again tomorrow. Of course, it's a day game. Going to have to change it up a little bit. Get up a little earlier. Whatever you got to do. That means you have to uh, drive to Minneapolis again. Head back home. I got to get back to Milwaukee first. <laughs> See ya. I'll finish up. <laughs> Lucroy in the center field. Got that one on the barrel. And that's going to be caught by Hicks. So the inning is over, but the Brewers score three, and they have put five on the board in the last two innings. Adam Lynn with a six RBI game today.
presented by Potawatomi Hotel and Casino. Book your stay now. And uh, ninth inning here, Brewers with a big lead. Adam Lind has been a big story. Home run for him. Also six RBIs. The Brewers have a 10 to 5 lead. Jeff Grayson and Davey Nelson will break it all down for you on Brewers Live right here from Target Field. We'll also get inside the clubhouse, talk to Craig Council, Kyle Loesch, and uh, hopefully the Brewers put this game away here with Corey Knable taking the mound. All right, Sophia, thanks. Setting up the hard throwing right hander is Craig Council, Rick Kranitz. Step off the mental gas for a moment here. The Brewers have a comfortable lead, trying to get Corey Knable to finish things off and uh, pick up a win. The Brewers haven't beaten the Twins much over the last couple of years, especially here. Eighth game for Knable. He's had one bad outing. Other than that, it's been pretty solid. Yeah, another big arm coming at the Twins here in the ninth. Fastball, overhand curveball for Knebel. Aaron Hicks leads off for the Twins. Don't forget tomorrow, day baseball on a Saturday afternoon. Man, is that any good? That's the way it's supposed to be. Hopefully uh, the weather will hold out. It's supposed to rain here tomorrow, but they're saying tomorrow night. So we'll take their word for it. If it does rain, they can just close the roof. Oh, wait a minute. There's no roof. Never mind. They don't like that kind of talk around here, you know. <laughs> it's fighting words. Yeah, they don't like it. They Tell get you, mad. They really do. It's gorgeous out here right now. It is, isn't it? But, you know, there is a sign out there on the glass as uh, Knable snatches one out of the air. Hicks is retired. There's a sign out there that makes perfect sense on a night like this, but in April, and if the Twins move into the postseason, I don't know. Someday that sign just it kind of taunts you. We've been here for a few of those. Yeah. But it could not be nicer here right now. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. great crowd here as well. Yep. Hold that thought you know, over the, through the weekend. We were here a few years ago for a day game, extra inning game, and I think they had a rain delay in the 13th inning. Yes, that's correct. 14th inning. You weren't here. What are you talking about? <laughs> I remember watching from afar. <laughs> I think it was in the 11th inning. Wasn't it? It was on Father's Day, I was reminded. <sighs> Better present is that. Little extra inning baseball on Father's Day. Rain delay. Making memories. Delaying your grill time. Dozier takes a call. At strike three. Knable. Two up and two down. A ground out and a punch out. Matt Garza and J.R. Graham. Graham making his first career major league start. Against the former twin, Matt Garza, Miller Lite, what's on tap? Note the airtime, 12.30 here on Fox Sports Wisconsin. Brewers are hoping that that uh, five-inning appearance out of the bullpen is going to turn things around for Garza. Broke a four-game losing streak with a win. That 17-inning game. Big cut to miss. One ball, two strikes. Brewers scored the first five runs. The Twins scored the next five. And then the Brewers scored the last five. One, two on the way. Hunter lifts one in the air to center. Gomez will settle under it. And this one belongs to the Brewers tonight. A 10-5 to win. They let a lead get away.